time you buy a canned soft drink, consider this. That aluminum can will always be recyclable. Unlike plastic, aluminum never deteriorates, no matter how often it's melted down and used again. Aluminum cans are so lightweight that it's hard to believe they're made from a huge roll of aluminum sheeting that weighs nine metric tons. The sheet is about a meter and a half wide and as thin as construction paper. A roll like this is long enough to make three quarters of a million drink cans. The sheet feeds into a press that punches out round pieces that'll be formed into cans. The punch press actually performs two operations. It punches out a disc 14 centimeters in diameter, then bends it into a cup. What's left of the sheet gets compacted and sent back to the aluminum factory where it's recycled into new rolls. The cup goes into a machine called the draw and iron body maker. A tool draws out the aluminum forming the body of the can. The tool is lubricated so it won't tear the aluminum while stretching it. The lubricant also acts as a coolant because the aluminum heats up as it's being worked. Once the body is formed, a trimmer cleans and straightens the edge. Now the cans move along upside down on the conveyor belt over to the washer. washer performs a six-stage cleaning. The first two washes are in hydrofluoric acid at 60 degrees Celsius. The last four washes are in dionized water, neutral water with no pH, also at 60 degrees. The cans come out of the washer and go under a hot air dryer. They're now shiny because the hydrofluoric acid wash removed a thin surface layer of aluminum. Next, a roller passes over the cans, coating the bottom rims with varnish. This varnish coating allows the cans to slide easily on conveyor belts and in vending machines. It shows up as a blue ring under ultraviolet light. The cans are now ready to be printed. This rotation printing system can apply up to five colors one at a time. The machine then applies a layer of varnish to protect the ink. This is what the print and varnish process looks like in slow motion. And here's the actual speed, 1800 cans per minute. Next, the cans fly through an oven that instantly hardens the ink and dries the protective varnish. The next machine sprays a water-based varnish on the inside of the cans. This creates a barrier between the drink and the aluminum, so the drink won't end up tasting like metal. It also prevents the aluminum from being eaten away from the inside by the acid in carbonated drinks. Next, the cans go through a machine called the necker, which forms a 5 centimeter neck on the can. This is done gradually in 11 steps, so as not to puncture the paper-thin aluminum. The next machine, called the flanger, forms a curved over edge at the top of the can, which will later attach to the pull tab cover. The cans pass through a sophisticated vision system that photographs the inside of each can. Any can that doesn't meet standards, that has a bump or ink inside for example, is automatically canned from the production line. They strap the finished cans onto a pallet. From here, they're shipped to the drink company, which fills them, then attaches the pull tab cover. 